Okay, let's talk about the New York State Teacher Certification Examinations. And the specific exam we're going to be talking about in this video is the grades 1 through 6. And even more specifically, we're going to be talking about the math that you uh, may encounter on this particular exam. So if you're watching this video, I assume you're preparing for the New York State Teacher Certification Exam grades 1 through 6. And that is excellent. So what we're going to do in this video is take a look at a math practice problem that you should be able to handle pretty nicely if you're fully prepared for the math section on this particular exam. And we're going to get to that in a second. But first, let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabla Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over the last uh, several years, I've constructed many online math classes to actually include a New York State teacher certification exam grades one through six math test prep course. I'm going to leave a link to that course in the description of this video, but uh, all my courses taken me, um, uh, again, a long time to construct. And I do a lot of research what's on um, all the courses that I, I built. So this particular exam kind of had a way to kind of classify the, uh, the math level, let's say, on here. I would just say yeah, maybe a good description would be like high school level math. Okay, so some algebra, geometry. Of course, you're going to have to know all the basic stuff as well. So uh, even though that, you know, you're going to be looking to teach between grades one through six, that elementary level uh, doesn't mean that, you know, the entire exam is going to be like place value, fractions, decimals. Of course, you're going to have to know all that stuff as well. But there is a considerable amount of high school level math, again, algebra, geometry, et cetera, that you're going to have to really know uh, in order to do well on this exam. Okay, so let's go ahead and get to our math practice problem here. So the way I like to do these little videos is um, basically give you the problem. Okay, I'm going to give this to you here in a second. Then I'm going to give uh, you a little bit of a hint. Uh, if you don't want a hint, uh, obviously just pause the video and do the problem. And then I'm going to obviously solve the problem. Okay, so what's going on here? So I have my nice little car, okay? And this car is traveling at 100 feet um, every five seconds, okay? So it's going 100 feet every five seconds. So I wanna know how many minutes it will take to go one mile, okay? So this car is going 100 feet every five seconds, okay? I want to know how many minutes it's going to take to travel one mile. All right, so um, obviously uh, all of you out there are going to have to stop and think about this and the information that's kind of going on. Uh, if you think you can do it all on your own, definitely encourage you to pause the video and at least try. Uh, just don't listen to the hint I'm going to give. So if you don't want to hear the hint, pause the video because here comes the hint. All right, so we need to know a few things here, right? First of all, we need to know uh, we got miles and we got feet. So it's going to be necessary for this uh, particular problem uh, to know how many feet are in one mile. So if that was a missing piece of information that you needed, well, I'm going to go ahead and give that to you now. So it's 5,280 feet is one statuette mile. In other words, one mile on land. And this is a conversion that you want to be familiar with. Now, on um, on the exam, you uh, very well can have a conversion formula uh, sheet, or they might give that to you someplace. I don't actually know the specifics on this particular exam, uh, the format on it, but you should always be looking, you know, for like a formula sheet or conversion sheet, you know, where it's uh, liters, gallons, all that kind of stuff, metric standard system. But I would say like. Uh, how many feet are in one mile is just good general knowledge, good information that you might want to commit to your long-term memory. So if you weren't quite sure, there you go. Okay, so that's how many feet are in one mile. So that is probably enough of a hint for this particular problem because I'm going to go ahead and get into the solution. And I actually kind of wrote out the solution to kind of save us a little bit of time. So first of all, uh, probably the best way to kind of handle this problem is to set up a uh, proportion, okay? And what we got here, this 100 feet per second, is what we call a rate, all right? So really the topic that I'm kind of testing you on is something that we would refer to as rate, rates 
ratios and proportions. Okay, so rates, ratios, and proportions. So uh, let's just quickly review these concepts. I think it's um, uh, definitely worthy to do that. And we'll get to the solution here. So what is a uh, rate? Okay, well, first of all, a rate and a ratio is a fraction. Okay, so that's let's just make that clear. They're, they are fractions. Okay, so these guys here are uh, fractions, but, they're, but they are fractions that have um, certain characteristics to them that have to do with their units of measure. So rates, okay, let's just take this guy here, um, 100 feet over five seconds. So here, I got some sort of fraction going on. So we would say 100 feet per, right? Our little fraction bar is the word per, okay, five seconds. So it's a fraction. And notice here that we have feet and uh, the numerator, okay, the unit of measure here is feet, and then in the denominator, it's second. So, um, seconds. Um, so, what we have here, we have two different, completely different units of measure that we're comparing, all right? So, when you have that kind of situation, we would call this a rate, all right? Uh, and it, it, it could be distance to time, it could be all kinds of different things, but if you're if the units of measure are completely different, you know, what you have here, and it's and you're comparing two values, i.e. creating a fraction, uh, then you have a rate, and we like to use that word per that describes the fraction bar. So 100 feet per five seconds. So if you're hearing that word per, that is, uh, it's not a cat, <laughs> but I guess it could be, well, I guess it would be per, right, for a cat. Anyways, that's my little humor here for a math guy. But uh, anyways, you kind of hopefully, uh, you know, relate to these to these terms, right? Because we hear them all the time. Oh, 100 feet per second. Uh, we, we use those, that terminology, but, you know, we don't maybe real, realize technically what's going on. All right, so again, we have a fraction, all right, and this would be a rate because the units of measure are different. Now, I don't want to turn this into a complete full lesson, but I do think it's on rates, ratios, and proportions, but I do think it's definitely worthy to do a, a little quick uh, crash course here. All right, so ratios would be something that you might be familiar with. Let's say te student-teacher ratios, right? So let's say you have um, uh, two teachers per um, 50 students, okay? All right, let's, let's say this particular fraction. Obviously, this would be 1 over 25, but let's just look at this real quick. So now I'm saying two teachers. I'm using the word two, okay? Two teachers, two uh, 50 students. This would be an example, right? This is an example of a rate. This would be an example of a ratio, okay? Now, in this case... Here, with the rate, the units of measure were different. So you might be thinking, well, the units of measure uh, with the ratios are the same, and you would be correct. But some of you might be like, well, what's going on here? We're measuring teachers and students. They're different. No, they're not we're, we're, They're not different. Okay, we're counting human beings. We're counting people. <laughs> and uh, yes, teachers and both students uh, and their students are indeed human beings. They are people. So we're we're comparing the same units of measure. So when you have that kind of situation, you have a ratio, and we use the word two to um, uh, define that fraction bar, okay? Two teachers, two, 50 students. This is an example of a ratio. So this is not a ratio, this is a rate, okay? But however, both uh, ratios and rates, okay, are fractions, particular type of fractions. Now, let's talk about what a proportion is. A proportion is simply two equal fractions. That's all a proportion is. So let's use a fraction here, one half. Okay, so uh, let's all think here of another fraction that's not one half that is uh, equal to um, the mathematical value of one half, equivalent to one half. Here, I'll use uh, five over 10. You could use three over six. Any number of fractions, okay? So here I have one fraction that's equal to another fraction, right? So one half is equal to 510. Uh, we can come up with an infinite amount of examples. But the one thing about um, proportions is 
there is a particular property called the cross product, cross product that is really cool. So if we multiply across, if in fact we have a valid proportion, two equal fractions, the cross products are equal, okay, and in all proportions. So in other words, here, 1 times 10, okay, we're, we're going to be multiplying crosswise. 1 times 10 is equal to 2 times 5, or 10 is equal to 10, okay? So this is the main property of proportions, okay? And we study proportions, um, okay, we are talking about two equal fractions, but again, remember, rates and ratios are fractions. So we could be dealing with two equal rates, two equal ratios, etc., and we can um, set up proportions to solve problems, uh, to solve rates and rate and ratio problems. We use proportions, okay? And that's exactly what I'm, what, exactly what I'm going to do here. All right, so hopefully all this was like, okay, I remember all this stuff. So let's get back to our problem. So we know our car is going 100 feet per five seconds. Let's go ahead and reduce that fraction, okay? So it's 100 uh, feet per five seconds. Let's reduce this rate down to 20 feet per one second. All I'm doing is reducing this fraction. So that um, yeah, this measurement of the speed of the car, 20 feet per uh, one second, is the same as 100 feet uh, per five seconds. But I'm going to use its most simplest uh um, a unit of measure here um, in terms of the speed of the car. So here I have the rate of the of the vehicle, 20 feet per one second. Now notice um, I have feet in the numerator and down here in the denominator I have seconds. So I want to know how many seconds, first of all I'm going to find seconds and I'll get to minutes, how much time is it going to take for this vehicle to go 5,280 feet, which of course is one mile, okay? So one mile is 5,280 feet. I already know that the car is traveling at this rate. I can set up an equivalent fraction, okay? I wanna know how many seconds it's going to travel at this rate and go 5,280 feet, which is in fact one mile. So I'm setting up a proportion. I'm establishing two equal rates here. And now I can use the cross product, okay? So let me go ahead and erase this. All right, now if you're, if you're a little lost here, um, you know, don't panic. You know, I'm not, this is a lot of ground I'm covering in a short uh, period of time. But again, this should be a review for most of you out there if you're fully ready for this particular exam, okay? So let's go ahead and now apply the cross product. So 20... Feet, I can kind of go this way. We'll just drop the units of measure first. Uh, unit of measures for a second. I want to solve for x. I want to know how many seconds. So it's going to be 20 times x, right? I'm going this way. And then it's going to be 1 times 5,280. And that is simply 5,280, okay? And now I can solve for x here by dividing both sides of the equation by 20. All right, and you can see that's what I'm doing here. So x is going to be equal to 5,280 divided by 20, which is 264. So I was solving for x, all right? x was representing how many seconds, okay? So when you're solving proportions, you got to make sure that your units of measure, I have seconds in the uh, denominator, I have feet in the numerator. So your units of measure have to, to match. In other words, if feet is up here, Feet have got to be up here in the numerator as well. And likewise, seconds down in the denominator, seconds down in the denominator. So I solved this uh, basic proportion. I got 264 seconds. So to determine how many minutes that is, all I need to do is divide that by 60. And I get 4.4 minutes. Okay. So that is the solution to this problem. Okay. Now... Now, let's go ahead and wrap up this video. Uh, if you were able to do this problem successfully without a hint, then that uh, is pretty impressive, okay? I would say that this, again, is, you know, mm, you know, uh, middle school level, you know, ninth grade level mathematics. Even though some of you out there uh, might have found this extremely difficult, it's really not 
you know, this is, we're not talking about advanced high school level mathematics here. So this is the kind of stuff you really need to be prepared for on this New York State teacher certification exam, grades one through six, okay? Basic algebra, geometry concepts, amongst other things, okay? Now, if, uh, you know, if you were totally lost on this, and I doubt if some of you out there were totally, totally lost, um, you know, use it as feedback, okay? Be like, all right, you know, it's just, it's just one part of what you're going to need to want to review, mathematically speaking, for this particular exam. But use it as feedback. Don't panic. But the one thing is, um, uh, for sure, is you don't want to underestimate the math that's going to be on this exam. You're going to have to immerse yourself. And even if you are math phobic or you don't like math, just get yourself into a good study routine, just like anything else. I mean, you're clearly a motivated, committed person for you to be taking this exam. Just by virtue of you watching this video, you're a professional, okay? So you know what it takes to achieve goals. Um, but, you know, some of you out there may hate math to the point of like just, you know, you have a fear over it. That's not going to help you. What, what's going to better serve you is to get into a momentum of learning and building your skill sets, math skill sets, up over time, okay? So let's go ahead and wrap up this video. Again, I'm going to leave a link to my New York State teacher certification exam, grades one through six math test prep course in the description of this video. Extremely comprehensive. Um, could definitely benefit uh, those of you out there that are looking to you know, uh, study for this particular exam. If you're new to my YouTube channel, I've been on YouTube for a good 12 years at the time of this video. So I already have hundreds of videos on my channel that can help you prepare for this exam. So that's some stuff you wanna check out if you like my teaching style. I'm posting new stuff all the time. So hopefully consider subscribing if you enjoyed the video. Definitely appreciate the thumbs up. And leave me some feedback. Um, you know, what's your kind of career path? Are you going from high school to college to uh, teaching, which is cool? But maybe you're making a career switch. Maybe you're a retired military. Maybe, you know, you were, you know, doing whatever for 10 years and now you decided you want to become a teacher. So it's always interesting to see. Uh, uh, to see how people end up in the classroom. There's a lot of uh, different routes and there's a lot of people who uh, start teaching later in life. I will say this much, uh, and I, I do, I say this at on all the videos that I do for teacher certification exams. I do quite a bit uh, of uh, these type of videos, but I always state um, this is, you know, half of being a teacher is doing all the, your professional certification, college, passing you know exams like this and that's a lot of work and that takes a lot of commitment in and of itself but the other half of being a teacher is stuff that you're not going to be able to learn in a book okay you're simply just going to have to gain the experience of learning how to deal with actual students and parents and administration and issues and gradings and all the different things that make up education okay so obviously you're not going to teach your subject matter in a vacuum there's going to be real life pressures and with that i say Give yourself some time to gain the experience before you judge your how well how much you like teaching. Okay, uh, as you gain more experience, you will like teaching more. Okay, <laughs> because your first year teaching is typically your more challenging year because you don't you don't know. Okay, it's just. It's just, I always use that analogy, it's like being an airplane pilot. You can go to school to learn how to fly a big, you know, jet airliner, but until you get in that thing and you fly it for years and years and years, you're not going to be, you know, as relaxed or confident in your abilities. Same thing with teaching. It takes time to build up experience. So latch onto those veteran teachers um, and learn from all different types of teachers. You can have two teachers teach the same grade level, completely different personalities, completely different teaching styles, both um, highly successful and effective. Students love them. You don't have to be a copycat of another teacher. You can find your way. But, you know, before you, you know, uh, kind of find your way, you have to develop into that. So give yourself time to uh, gain that experience. But uh, with that being said, first things first. First thing is we got to get you through this certification exam, the math section. And um, hopefully this video will help you get focused on that goal. So I definitely appreciate your time and have a great day.